Hi friends, my name is Baji. Welcome back to our channel. In our previous video, we discussed the best practices for script development. These are important ones and in every script, we should try to implement them. If you haven't watched that video yet, I highly recommend watching it first and then continuing this video. So far, we have been learning how to make JMeter script. Now, it's time to actually run the tests and generate some reports. So in today's video, we will go through the process of executing the tests in JMeter and also generating some reports. So let's dive right in without any more delay. So what is test execution? In performance testing, test execution refers to the process of running different performance tests on a software application or system to assess its responsiveness, stability and scalability under various conditions. The primary goal is to identify and address performance bottlenecks and ensure that the application can handle the expected load. Typically, we will start test execution after the completion of all scripting activities. Before starting the test executions, we need to ensure that scripts accurately replicate the real user behavior. For example, consider the testing of the transfer functionality which involves moving money from one account to another. At the end of the transaction, the money should be deposited in the target account, right? So when running the transfer script using JMeter or any other performance testing tool, it should precisely replicate the intended action. After the script execution, we need to log in manually and validate if the amount was actually transferred. In addition to that, we also need to follow all the best practices to avoid any performance issues due to poor scripting. So, in JMeter, we can execute tests in two modes, GUI mode and non-GUI mode or CLI mode. So, what is GUI mode? Here GUI stands for Graphical User Interface. In this mode, it allows direct interaction with visual elements on the JMeter interface like adding or removing elements to the test plan, running the script, stopping it and more. In this mode, we don't have to memorize anything. We can easily navigate and select the required option. This mode is user-friendly mode and primarily used for script development and debugging. Because the GUI mode consumes more system resources and this might prevent us from generating the target workload in the high load test scenarios. So to execute a test in the GUI, simply navigate to the JMeter bin directory, launch the JMeter executable file, open the desired JMeter script and start the test. Now let's understand about non-GUI mode or CLI mode. So JMeter non-GUI mode refers to running Apache JMeter without the graphical user interface. Instead of interacting with JMeter through a visual interface, we operate it from the command line or terminal. This is the preferred mode for running high load test scenarios in JMeter. Some people also refer to it as headless testing as it does not require a graphical interface. JMeter now officially calls this mode as CLI which stands for command line interface. So if you come across different terms for the same thing like CLI, non-GUI, headless, etc. It's just another way of talking about the same thing. Okay. Just remember that listeners can be added during script development for script validation and debugging purpose only. Upon completion of script development activities, the listener should be removed or disabled so that we can avoid any resource contention issues during our high load test scenarios. So the basic syntax for running JMeter test using CLI or non-GUI mode is JMeter space providing some options. So these options can be categorized into two groups, basic and additional options. For some options, we may need to specify the additional parameters. So let's start with the basic option and then we will look at the additional options. Okay. When we specify hyphen n, that means we are telling JMeter that this test should be executed in non-GUI or CLI mode. So whenever you are running a test in non-GUI mode, this option is mandatory. Okay. Next we have hyphen t. Here we need to specify the actual JMeter script that is JMX file information. If the script is stored in a different directory other than bin, then we should specify the complete path. And then we have hyphen l option. Here we need to specify the results file information so that JMeter will try to write all the results in this file and we can use this file for our analysis purposes. Next we have some additional options like hyphen j to capture the JMeter execution logs for additional troubleshooting purposes and then hyphen e for generating HTML dashboard automatically after the test and we also have hyphen o for storing the HTML dashboard results. So along with hyphen o we need to specify the location where we want this dashboard to be generated. Okay. So that JMeter will generate the dashboard after the test and will store it in the given location. And then we have hyphen small case r and uppercase r and these two will be used for distributed testing. And then we have uppercase j which will be used for additional properties. So if you want to pass some runtime properties we can use this option. So if you are using the hyphen j option in the command line then you need to read those properties using properties function. Okay. Now we understand the process of executing the JMeter scripts using CLI and non-GUI mode. 
Now the question comes, how do we view the test results? Basically, the results can be viewed in two ways, while the test is running and the after the test. You might be thinking, is it really required to monitor or view the test while it's running? So when running a test in CLI mode or non-GUI mode, it's crucial to periodically check the results, especially for long duration tests. For example, imagine scheduling an eight hours test and an issue arises just 30 minutes into the test due to some environmental factor which affects the target application. So in this situation, the test continues sending requests to the application regardless of its state, attempting to collect the metrics. If we let the test run for the full eight hours without checking, then it's not really helpful because the application itself is not working. So regularly keeping an eye on things helps us catch problems early so we can stop the test, figure out why it is failed and make any needed changes. So this careful approach makes sure we use testing resources wisely and get meaningful results. There are three ways to view the results while the test is running. The first method is enabling summarize configuration. And then we have a plugin called console status logger. We can install that plugin and view the results while the test is running. And finally, we have configuring backend listener with some external database and view the results using some visualization tools like Grafana. So we will look at the third approach in detail in the upcoming videos. So even after the test run, the results can be viewed in two ways. First, we can load the results file in any one of the listener in the JMeter interface and then perform the analysis. And the second method is generating an HTML report. Again, generating a report can be done in two ways, one through JMeter user interface and another one automatically from the command line by using hyphen E option, okay? Now let's look at the demo to understand the execution process and some reporting basics with some examples. So for this demo purpose, I'm going to use JPET store demo application. The reason for choosing that application is by default, if somebody wants to use JPET store demo application, they generally use this particular URL, correct? When somebody is using this URL, that means whenever they are doing some transactions, all the requests browser is sending to this particular server. So if you are doing the load test with some X number of users, all those users will try to send the request to this particular server. Since this is a demo application and Octoperf team created for helping others to learn the JMeter scripting or load runner scripting, right? So we don't want to trouble them. They have created a container image which is available in Docker. So we can use that container image and deploy that application into our local laptop so that we can have our own local application environment and then we can use that environment to do the test execution, okay? So you must be thinking, what is a container? Basically, containers allow developers to package an application along with its dependencies, libraries, and runtime components into a single unit so that we can take that container and deploy it as a package. And Docker is a platform designed to develop and deploy and run those containers, okay? So if you also want to follow the same approach, then what you need to do is first you need to install the Docker onto your laptop. So you can open the Docker official website and then download the exe file from this website. If you are using Windows or if you are using any other platforms like Mac, Linux, then you can follow the instructions provided in this official documentation page. Okay. The installation process is very simple. You just need to download the exe file and then you need to double click that exe file. Then it will install the Docker desktop on your laptop. Okay. So once you install the Docker desktop, you need to go to applications and then look for Docker desktop app. Once you open the Docker desktop, then it will look like this. Okay, you will have containers, images, volumes, information. So you might be thinking, no, since I already installed it, I know what is the image name and everything, right? How do we know like which images are available for download and installing it in local, right? So we have a repository called Docker Hub where all the developers will try to store their images. If anybody wants to use that image, they can download it from this Docker Hub. Some of them are officially maintained by Docker's team or some of them are maintained by the individual teams, okay? For example, so to install that MySQL database, search for MySQL and then Docker will show you all the images related to that MySQL here. So if you click that image, then it will show you all the different instructions and information about this particular image. So they have different versions available. And if somebody wants to use this image, they first need to download. So in Docker, downloading is nothing but pulling the image from the Docker Hub. So there are multiple ways to do that. One, you can use the command prompt or terminal. So when you are planning to do using the command prompt or terminal, then you need to use this command docker pull mysql. Or if you are using the desktop, 
you can also directly search for mysql from here and then and then pull that image once you pulled it that means the image is stored in your local after that you need to start that container right then only you can make use of that application to start the application you need to click the run button that will run the application after that you can use that application for your activities okay since we want to deploy jpet store application in our local machine so let's look for jpet store in the search so it will show you a list of different images the one i am using is the j loisel jpet store 6 so you can pull that image and then you can run it once you pull the image it will show you in the images section see here i have already pulled that image so i don't need to pull it again if you want to run the application then you know go to the container section and then start the selected item so i have already selected this jpet store because that is the only image i have downloaded so i can click start or i can click start here as well once you start then this container will be started and then we can also see the status here as running so if you want to open that application you need to use this particular url because that application is running in port 8080 okay so let's click this here if you notice we are not using the same url as here right pet store dot octopus here we are using localhost colon 8080 that means this particular j pet store application is running in our local environment so enter the store and you can do all the things that you are doing it in this official jpet store demo okay so this way even if you put so much of load it will only impact to our local environment it will not impact to anyone so to save our time i have already developed this script using this local environment so let me quickly open jmeter and let me open the script that i have developed it's a simple basic script i just wanted to make sure that everyone understand the execution process concepts clearly that is why i'm not putting so much into the script we have one thread group and with five transactions and also one timer which will introduce delay between the transactions and i also correlated some ids because when we are using the application the moment we launch here we will be seeing different categories right like fish dogs cats in every iteration i want a new item to be picked up i don't want always select fish so that is why i have correlated the category ids here from this particular response and then i am passing it over here and once we select that category we will be seeing different product ids again i want to randomly select one of the product id from this list so that is why i have another correlation in place in the categories page which will select the product id and then i am passing that here and i also have one assertion here and purposely i am putting some wrong text here so that when we are doing the actual execution we will be seeing the mix of successful transaction and failed transaction because that is what in real time we will see it okay and then one listener so let's check the thread group configuration so we have one thread with one loop count let's run the script to make sure that everything is working as expected okay so we have launch successful enter enter story successful and other transactions like select reptiles and then it is trying to select the reptiles product id and finally it will try to return to the previous page so that's it since we have given wrong assertion text that is why it is saying the test failed so even if i run the same test for multiple iterations let's say i want to run with five iterations let's disable the timer so that we can see the results quickly so let's clean up and then rerun the test so now if you noticed here it selected reptile birds and then cats right so every time it will try to select the random category from the available list okay now let's enable the timer back so so far whatever we did we did it in jmeter user interface right so so we can call this as a gui mode test execution because we are doing everything in the interface we are not doing it any command prompt or terminal right now let's look at how to do the same thing using the non-gui mode or cli mode okay as i explained whenever we are doing the test in non-gui mode we should disable all the listeners so right now we have only one listener let's disable it and then clear the results now to run the jmeter script in non-gui mode we need to open the terminal okay before we do that i will also show you one thing so whenever you launch the jmeter jmeter also suggests you one important thing for load testing use cli mode which is nothing but non-gui mode and they also given the command right so this is the basic command that they have given us if you want to run the test using cli or non-gui mode okay so we cannot execute any commands over here so that is why we need to open a new command prompt so let's open the command prompt if you already configured jmeter into environment variables then you can run that command anywhere irrespective of the directory that you are 
you can run the non gui mode command okay to understand whether jmeter is configured in the environment variables let's type the jmeter and hyphen hyphen version if you are getting the version details back then that means jmeter is configured in the environment variable section okay for example if it is not configured then you might not be seeing this output then what you need to do is you need to go to the directory where exactly this jmeter executable is available so in my case it is available in d so i need to go to d softwares apache and then bin so here i need to type that command so then only jmeter will understand that non gui mode command and will run the test okay so jmeter also provides some help commands we can use them to understand what are all the different options available for running the script in non gui mode so you can type jmeter dash question mark which will show you the list of options that are available for running the script in non gui mode so when we are discussing the theoretical part i have explained some of the options right so we have so many other options also we can go through here and then understand the purpose and we also have one more command jmeter hyphen h it will also give you some help here for example if you go here it is telling if you want to run the apache jmeter in non gui mode then you need to open the command prompt or unix shell and type this command and if you want to run apache jmeter in non gui mode and generate a report at the end then you have to type this command so these two commands are really helpful i will be sharing these commands information in the notes so don't worry about it and whenever you are not very sure then you can type these commands and look for the required option and then run the command accordingly okay now let's try to run the same test using non gui mode so first we need to type jmeter and then hyphen n this is to tell jmeter that we are planning to run our script in non gui mode and then hyphen t after that we need to specify the script location so my script is stored in my desktop so let me go back to desktop and then select that file so this is the file so let me copy this path and then paste it here and the script name is jpet store underscore demo dot jmx so you have to give the complete path if jpet store demo dot jmx is available in bin directory then you don't need to specify this okay but at the same time you need to make sure that you are into bin directory right now i am into c users right so if i only specify the file name then what jmeter will do is it will look for the same file in the current directory if it is not exist then it will not run okay and then we want the results also right so we need to specify hyphen l and the results location so i want to store my results in the same location so let's say jpet store demo dot jtl okay we need to specify the results file name as well if the file is exists then it will not override so make sure that you are giving a unique file if you are running the test multiple times make sure that either you delete the previous results file or you give a new name so this is the basic command if you want to run a test in non gui mode okay before running this command we need to make sure couple of things one we have the desired thread group properties already configured in the script and then we want to make sure that all the listeners are disabled okay so let's go back to our jmeter script and then verify the thread group properties so currently we only configured one thread with one second ramp up and loop count as one so that means when you start the test it will only run for one iteration but we want a load test right let's make it as the user count as 10 and then ramp up as 5 second make the loop count as infinity because we want to run this test with the duration based so select the specified thread lifetime and select the duration as 60 seconds so that means i want to run the test for 1 minute okay let's save and then go back to that command prompt and then execute it so now what will happen is it will run the test for 1 minute and then it will write all the results into this jpet store underscore demo dot jtl okay so if i go back to my desktop folder so i will be seeing a file called jpet store demo dot jtl so once the test is done then all the results will be available in this file so we can use this file for analysis purposes you can also create a csv file instead of jtl if you want to have the output in the csv format okay the only difference is just name the file as jpet store underscore demo dot csv instead of jtl okay so let's wait for this test to be done so now the test is ended now we can see the file size is also 51 kb if you open it in a notepad you can see all the test results okay now we understand the process of running the script in gui mode and then non gui mode 
during the test execution if you want to monitor the results there are multiple ways to do it one thing is by enabling the summarize configurations in jmeter.properties and the another thing is installing a plugin called console status logger okay so first we will see summarizer configuration options so go to jmeter bin directory and then look for jmeter.properties open with any text editor so i'm using visual studio code as my text editor and then here we need to look for summarizer configuration so, so this is the section right now everything is commented that is why we are not seeing any output when we are executing the test in the non gui mode so here it did not show any output so let's uncomment all the options from here let's save it one important thing is if you are using any transaction controllers in your script you need to make sure that ignore transaction control sample results to be false otherwise it will not show any output okay so if you are not using the transaction controllers then you don't need to make any changes but if you are using transaction controllers in my case i am using transaction controllers in my script so i need to make sure that this value changed as false okay so let's save this let's go back to our command prompt again so before running the command just delete the existing results file so that we can use the same file name now just read on the same command okay now this time what will happen is it will try to show the output so we have one property called summarizer interval by default it is 30 seconds so if you leave the default value then you will get the output in every 30 seconds since we are planning to run the test for only one minute so if you are leaving the default values then you might be seeing the output only two times so that's why i'm making it as two so that every two seconds i can see the test execution status so let's go back to our command prompt and rerun this same command now every two seconds it will try to show the output here if you see the summary is the summary name you can change anything you want by default it is summary so that is why it is showing the summary and then it is showing the thread information duration average response time minimum maximum and then error since one of the transaction we purposely creating a failure that is why we are also seeing the error count so this is one way to view the results during the non geo mode execution okay so again it will take a minute because the total duration of the test is 60 seconds so once 60 seconds is completed then the test will be ended and the same thing if you go back to the directory it will show you the results file as well dot jtl so now the test is completed then you can use this results for analysis purposes okay and the second way of viewing the results during non gui mode test execution is using the console status logger plugin so what we will do is we will disable all the options except the last one because we need this option then only it will show that output otherwise it will not show the output let's comment everything so when you are using that console status logger plugin you don't need these options you can disable them and then go back to your jmeter go to options plugin manager and then look for that plugin console since i have already installed it it is not showing up here but it is showing up in the installed plugins okay so this is the plugin that you need to install once you installed it then it will show you in the installed plugins so what you need to do is you need to add that plugin to this thread group so right click the thread group add and then that is a listener so this is the console status logger listener you see here it is telling this is a simple listener that prints short summary log to console while jmeter is running in non gui mode okay so now let's save this and then rerun the same command so this time what we will do is instead of creating the results as jtl let's do it as csv and then we'll also rename it to demo one okay so let's run the test again so we already disabled the summarizer configurations right but still we are seeing the details here you can see number of threads running number of sample requests latency and response time errors see now we also have some errors because i think this is the place where they are executing the transaction five so this is the another way of viewing the results when you are running a test using non gui mode okay and we have the other option which is using the backend listener that we will see it in the upcoming videos so let's wait for this test to be done then we will understand the process of viewing the results okay so the test is completed now if you go back to that location where we store the results we have the csv file as well right so when you are running the test in non gui mode you can either create jtl file or csv file so far what we understand is viewing the results while the test is running right now we want to view the results after the test execution is completed now we have the results here so if you want to view these results there are again multiple ways one you can load these results file into any listener in jmeter that will show you the results what happened during the test execution and another option is generating the html report okay so first we will see the option one which is 
loading these results file into listeners. So let's go back to JMeter and add whatever the listeners that we want to use to view those results. So let's add view test results, view results tree, and also add summary report, also add aggregated report, whatever the listeners that you want, right? Also add the view results in table, okay? So we want to see those results in these listeners. What we need to do is we need to select that file name here. So click browse and then select that file. So JTL. So it will show you all the results, what happened in the test, right? Everything will be shown here. You can see the status. There are some failures. There are some successful transactions. So you can do the same thing in the summary report as well. So you just need to select that JTL file here. So that will show you all the results here. How many samples? What is the average, minimum, maximum, error rate? And then same thing for aggregated report and then also, you can do the same thing for view results in table. This time we will select the CSV file instead of JTL file. So that will also show you the same thing. So here you can see successful transaction status and the failure transaction status. So this is one way of viewing the results after the test. Another way is generating the HTML report. So you can generate the HTML report in two ways. One from JMeter user interface, another one while running the test itself, you can instruct JMeter to create a report at the end of the test, okay? First, we will see how to generate a report from UI. So for that, you need to go to tools and then click generate HTML report. Here we need to provide some information so that JMeter will generate this report for us. First, it is asking to provide the results file, which is either in CSV or JTL format. So click browse and then go to the directory where you have stored those results. In my case, those are stored in desktop. So I'm selecting that file. And then we also need to select the user.properties because when Jmeter is trying to generate the HTML report, it will look for the configuration that we have defined in user.properties. Okay, so let's select that file. That file will be available in Jmeter bin directory. So you need to go to that Apache Jmeter bin and then select the user.properties. And finally, where you want the results to be created. So you need to select the output directory. So click browse and then go to the directory where you want to store. So I have a folder created in my JMeter scripts results. So I'm using this directory. So when we generate the report, all these reports will be available in the directory. Okay. So once you filled all these three details, click generate report. So that will generate the HTML report. So here it is saying report created. Okay. So if you go back to the desktop results directory, now you can see different files. So you need to select the index HTML file that will show the HTML report. So here it is telling the test report information the source file name, the test duration, and we have AppDex, which is Application Performance Index. Basically, Application Performance Index is an open standard developed by alliance of companies. It defines a standard method of reporting and comparing the performance of the application. So basically, AppDex measures the average application response time in three levels. One is satisfied threshold, toleration threshold, and then frustration thresholds, okay? And based on that, it will give some rating here. So this is that information. And then we have the request summary in a pie chart, which shows the successful and fail request percentage. In our one minute test, we have 84% of the past transaction and then 15% of the failed transaction. And then in the statistics table, we can see all the transaction stats, right? So we can see launch transaction, how many samples it got executed in that one minute. And then what is the average minimum maximum response time, 90 percentile, 95th, 99th percentile throughput, network received and sent, and also the other transactions. And then we can see the errors. So there are test failed. So these are the assertion failures. And then it is also showing the top five errors by sampler because all the failures are in the return to the main page transaction. So that is why it is showing the one transaction. And you also have different charts available for analysis purpose. So if you click chart over time, it will show you response over time graph. And then you can also see response time percentile over time graph and then you also see different active threads over time bytes throughput over time and so on and also if you go to throughput it will show you different throughput related graphs like transactions per second graph which will help us to understand how much tps we have achieved during this testing so since this is one minute test i'm not going in detail with these results graphs but you have so much of information to analyze what happened in the test okay similarly you have the response time graph you can see response time overview, which will tell you how many responses were less than 500 milliseconds, how many were having response time between 500 and 1500 milliseconds, and how many were in errors. You can also see the response time distribution. You can also create some custom graphs as well, okay? So this is one way of generating the HTML report. 
using the JMeter user interface. So the another way is we can automatically generate while executing the non GUI command. Okay, so let's try to do that now. So let me disable all these listeners as we don't want these listeners. And then this time keep the same configurations because I don't want to run the test for 20 minutes and then waiting for the test to be done. Okay, so let's use the same command. Only thing is we need to specify a couple of other options. So before that, let me clean up my results, delete, and then also I will also delete these two files. So the other two option is one is hyphen E, which we are telling JMeter to generate the HTML report after the test execution and then hyphen O with the output directory path. So I want my results to be stored in the results directory. So let me copy this path and then paste it here. So this is the command that you have to use if you want to generate HTML report after the test execution. Okay. So let's run this test again. Since we have the console logger plugin, it will also show you the results while the test is running. Okay. So let's wait for a minute to complete this test and then we will go back to the results directory and then verify whether the report is actually created automatically. Okay. So now the test is completed. If you check this results directory, you have the HTML report. See, so this is another way of generating the HTML report using the non geo mode command options. Okay. So in real time, there may be chances that we may need to configure this report based on our application. Right? All these HTML report configurations are available in JMeter bin report generator properties. So if you open that file, we can see different configuration options. So if you go to the top, they have clearly mentioned that this file should not be modified. So this file should be considered as the read only file. Okay. So instead of making any changes here, they're suggesting us to use the user dot properties file and then configure whatever the changes that we want. So we can select the configuration from here and then copy it over to that user dot property and then make the changes. Okay. So let me also open the user dot properties. So this is the user dot properties here. I can make all the changes. Let's say I don't want the report title as Apache JMeter dashboards. Okay. So let's uncomment this and then say JPET store performance test dashboard. Okay. So this is what I want to give as a title to my report. So let's regenerate the same report using non GUI mode. So let's delete these results. Once again, I will also close this, close this. So we can also generate the HTML report using a existing results file. So to do that, we just need to type jmeter hyphen g and then need to specify that results file. So all our results are stored here. So we have this jpet store demo dot one CSV file. We can use this file to generate the HTML report. So let's copy this path and then specify the file name one dot CSV. And then we need to specify the output directory. Okay. Which is hyphen o with the results directory path. So let's copy this again. So using this command, you can generate the HTML report using the existing results. So you don't need to always run the test to generate the HTML report. Okay. If you have a results file, then you can use this command to generate the HTML report. So let's run this. So it will create the HTML report and we'll store it here in this same results directory. So if you open this index file, now we can see our JPEG store performance test dashboard instead of Apache JMeter dashboard, right? You can make so many configurations in this report by referring to report generator properties. For example, by default, it is using the granularity as 60 seconds. If you want only 30 seconds, then what you need to do is you need to copy this property to user dot properties and then make that change. So, okay. This is the way you can customize this HTML report. I hope it's clear to you the process of running the test in GUI mode and then non GUI mode and then generating the reports. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for staying till the end and supporting me. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or want to share your experience, feel free to leave a comment below. All the video notes have been uploaded in GitHub and you can find the link in the description. If you are new to our channel, please consider subscribing and also like and share this video so that others will also get benefited. I'll see you with the next video in this module. Until then, take care, stay safe and keep learning.